Um, I want to apologize for not live streaming yesterday. Um, Fridays have just been so busy the past few weeks. I've been having trouble getting my my uh, 12 p.m. live stream in on Friday, so I thought, okay, I'll just put it up on Saturday. And uh, the the topic for this week is something I blogged about on Wednesday, and I've been trying to blog on Wednesday and then talk about the topic of the blog on Friday. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm in Florida. It's not snowy. Um, let's see. My um, I'm gonna try this again because this thing works well. Okay, I was having wireless issues, so I moved to see if I could do my live stream from this part. We'll see if it works. Um, so I'm I'm uh, I'm in Florida. I'm visiting family, um, doing a little yoga, and working on my next course that's going to be released in January. I'm so excited um, about it. I'll tell you more about that soon. Um, today I want to talk about rebounding and how beneficial it is. So rebounding is um, kind of a technical term for <laughs> for something really silly, which is bouncing around. And uh, I've been using it in my yoga classes, and I've been using it uh, with my, in my trainings for uh, for many years. And there are, and it confers many benefits. It's worth. Um, let's see, come and join. Um, you are welcome to welcome to leave a comment. By the way. Um, so it's, it, I've been using it for many years and it's something that you can easily weave into your yoga classes. So, and there's lots of benefits to it. So one of the things you may have seen a three or four or five year old child doing is this, <laughs> and maybe with some humming, uh, or maybe, you know, they, they might be bouncing around moving their head or moving their hands around sometimes. And usually we say like, oh, this is, you know, you're moving around like that and it's annoying me, so stop. You know, we inhibit them, that behavior. But that behavior from children is often a self-regulating behavior because rebounding is something that helps to regulate the nervous system. So that kind of, and you see, you actually see grown people doing it. Oftentimes you'll see grown men sitting at the airport shaking their leg. I can't show you right now, but you know, the leg going up and down. Um, that's a form of rebounding too. So, so this is a natural, intrinsic way that the nervous system resets itself. It's something that most human beings do at some point in their life. And when we inhibit it or when we stop it, that means the nervous energy has to go into other behaviors to mediate the nervous system. So we end up with um, habits that may be self-destructive, even addictive behaviors uh, that we have because we're trying to quell the the nervous system. We're trying to bring the nervous system back to some kind of homeostasis. Um, so I encourage people to bounce around and to move around uh, doing yoga. It often the other thing that is really nice about rebounding when you're in the middle of yoga is you've been using this, uh, you've been using these sort of strong movements uh, or you when you're doing asanas or very controlled focus, you know, attention network focused kind of movements and then the rebounding is just like, well, let all that go and kind of reset the nervous system. So there's, uh, there's quite a benefit to using this during yoga practice. It also just kind of like lively and fun. Um, it's something to stick in the middle of your class, you know. Um, I wanted to say one other thing about this, which is that, about rebounding, which is that um, when I posted my blog on Wednesday about rebounding, one of my colleagues and friends, um, Kixi Hawk, in, uh, who's in... California in uh, San Jose, she mentioned that rebounding is so good for perimenopause and menopause. I was like, wow, that is such a good point. Yes, um, something to, to help keep the system coming back into homeostasis. Now, of course, the other big thing about rebounding, is, the thing that you hear from the physical therapist is about the hydration of the fascia, the connective tissue. And the connective tissue, of course, made primarily of water and uh, it provides the electrical signaling through the system. So keeping that system well functioning is so important. Okay, so I have some comments from um, Lisa that I want to read. I guess I will keep my kids trampoline. <laughs> no, seriously, vibration is a common tool we use with sensory sensitive kids in physical rehab. Thanks, Lisa is a wonderful uh, 
physical therapist, so she she's chiming in there. Thanks, I appreciate it. And she said, cue that mulabanda for some pelvises. Aha, very important, <laughs> thank you. So if you're doing uh, rebounding and you are of the perimenopause or menopausal age and have had children, and perhaps there's some pelvic floor challenges that would that certainly makes a lot of sense Lisa thank you for thank you for uh, that comment um, okay so give it a try in your own practice and by the way I, you know, I can't really show it so much on the on the I'm on my phone but rebounding can look like this it can look like shaking right it can involve the head you can do horse lips <laughs> which is a fun rebounding thing that gets the face involved in it too. It can be little tiny bouncing of the knees or it can be big jumping depending on what's going on with your system and whether or not that is comfortable for you. So pretty much everybody can have some access to this practice, but you're going to have to adapt the practice to meet the needs of the person, particularly if there's hip or knee or ankle uh, joint issues that might because the, the rebounding really mostly comes from the legs. And then as Lisa said, trampoline would be another uh, vehicle for somebody with, uh, with knee or, or hip issues. I was, this morning I went for a walk on the beach and um, actually turned into a run. And one of the reasons it turned into the run is because the softness in the sand made it really easy for me to, to move without you know hitting, it, it felt really good in my joints to move so you know that it, again this is like a similar kind of uh, feeling or movement um, that that you can access uh, so however you can find it however you can find the jiggling you know jiggling is important oh I should mention belly dancing belly you know that kind of movement and jiggling it's again it's, it's a form of rebounding okay so there's one more comment from Molly Molly said I watched some videos on YouTube about rebounding this week is it more beneficial to do on a trampoline? Sure, I mean, a trampoline is great if you can do it, but I also think, like, sometimes I'm washing my dishes and I'll do a little rebounding or brushing my teeth. It's not as easy when I'm brushing my teeth, but sometimes I'll do it, you know, at different times of the day, it's easy to do rebounding whether or not I have a trampoline available, but certainly trampolines are great for, for rebounding and confer those benefits of hydrating that tissue and resetting the nervous system. Those are the two big things, I think, to, to talk about or to explain to your students about why rebounding is so useful in their, uh, in their personal practice. And if you start integrating it into your yoga classes, you know, you do warrior two, whatever, uh, triangle pose, and then on both sides, and then coming back to neutral, do some compensation, and then do some rebounding. And pe people really like it. I have some, some of my students who are just like, when are we gonna do more rebounding? Because it feels so good. Um, I also saw, and I can't remember the woman's name, but another yoga teacher was talking about rebounding, and she, she holds, actually holds a, a jar full of water while she's doing, and she has everybody hold the water, and then they rebound together and watch the water and think about the water as a reflection of the uh, fascia, a reflection of the, of the uh, fascia, and then, you know, think about how they're hydrating the tissues while they're doing it. So I thought that's a nice... Um, that's a nice cue or a nice prompt to use with it if you've got you know a bunch of ball jars you can bring those to the class and let everybody re rebound together and watch their fascia get hydrated so um, oh I know what I wanted to say one more thing before I finish up which is that if you're curious about this fat you want to learn a little bit more fascia and why it's important to keep the fascia hydrated I think a great video is called the fuzz speech and you can find that on YouTube and it is a uh, with this wonderful anatomist called Gil I think his name is Gil Headley um, and that video is just wonderful to uh, have a better understanding of fascia why it's so important to keep movement in the body to keep the fascia healthy why it's so important to keep the fascia healthy fascia Fascia, by the way, um, and I put this in the blog that I wrote, has just recently been recognized by the medical community as an organ, and they call it the interstitium. Uh, and they're starting to do, you know, more and more research on it. It's been out, like the body workers have been talking about fascia forever. The yoga people have been talking about it forever. The medical community is finally on board with it and recognizing the importance of it in uh, in health and healing. So. Hope this has been fun. Please share with uh, friends if you think they might want to know a little bit more about rebounding. And I'll see you next week, probably Friday. Namaste.